Hello everyone, welcome to a very exciting episode of the Pony Podcast, which Alex and I have been so excited about for such a long time. We were at the Pony Club Coaching Conference yesterday, and before all of the fun of the day kicked off, we borrowed GB, Junior, and under-18 coach Caroline Moore to talk about how she still got started in eventing and coaching, and the skills that she wants everyone to start working on, from the grassroots of the sport all the way up to Team GB before Tokyo. This episode is kindly sponsored by Chimera Sports. They are an infrared sportswear brand harnessing the power of ceramic fiber technology to speed up recovery and improve performance. They are a brand I've been using myself for about five years now to treat shin splints, which I get when I run. But they also help my back, which I hurt with an alarming regularity. The technology works by a ceramic fibre that's woven into the fabric that absorbs it energy from visible light and heat that your body releases. It converts it to a specific infrared wavelength, then re-emits it back into your muscles. And what this does is causes the blood vessels in your muscles to dilate, so get bigger, and improve your circulation. It increases oxygen saturation in your muscle tissue. It improves the amount of energy that your cells can release per ATP cycle, and it relieves pain. And in case you're a normal person, and that was just a whole load of jargon, basically, they improve your performance when you're exercising and they help you recover quicker when you're not. Um, if you want to check out their products, head to chimerasport.com or check out our latest Instagram posts as they're tagged in the caption and you can just go straight to their Instagram page. Okay, the exciting part. We are sorry about the sound quality. It was recorded in the middle of Hartbury's gorgeous indoor arena. So the acoustics aren't as good as they normally are from our kitchen. Uh, if there's anything you wish we'd asked, anything you want us to ask next time, and uh, anyone you want us to interview, email us at theponypod at gmail.com or DM the Instagram page at the Pony Podcast or message us on Facebook, The Pony Podcast. Okay, enjoy. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so we're here with Caroline Moore, um, our first ever interview. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. We realize we're such a, we're a really new thing, so having someone like you get involved is amazing. That's a pleasure. Um, so we'll start with a really easy question. Um, were you in the Pony Club? If so, what branch were you in? Yes, I joined the Pony Club at the age of 16, which I know that sounds rather late, uh, but I was with the Southwold North um, oh. in Lincolnshire. What made you decide to join it so late? It's because I actually learnt to ride in Skegness, or yeah. near Skegness, which actually there was no pony clubs oh. around there at <laughs> yeah. all. My parents were um, completely unhorsey, so I'm sort of very first generation. Yeah. Um, and so we didn't have a trailer, uh, a lorry, yeah. so no transport whatsoever. So when I actually moved out um, into the sticks a little bit more, yeah. I then found a friend who had got a trailer. So yeah. that's where I started going to the pony club at that point. Yeah. Oh, cool. Ooh. What did you learn in pony club that you've kept with you today? I learned to rise on the right diagonal. I remember that, <laughs> was, that was really stuck into me. Um, I certainly learned to kick because yeah. um, I remember we used to jump on each other's ponies a bit, and we used to yeah. uh, just we did that as well. yes. Um, I I learned to stick on board yeah. and all the sorts of things that you should really learn, yeah. you know, as a kid actually. So I yes, my first BE event, I saw Mark Todd riding on the wrong diagonal. All I could think was like, oh my god, Mark Todd on the wrong diagonal. Oh my god, Mark Todd on the wrong diagonal. <laughs> How exciting! <laughs> I, like, I, couldn't, I couldn't get over it. I went back to like pony club lessons and I was like, that's it. I don't have to anymore. Mark Todd doesn't do it. Um, what's a memory that you have from your days in pony club that you would relive tomorrow if you could, or that you wish was still allowed because of health and safety? <laughs> Um, I remember at, uh, at the end of the day of our pony yeah. club camps, um, we used to be, used to take our ponies down to the field along a country lane, um, that's probably about, uh, half a mile long. Yeah. And we used to stick head collars and lead reins on, mm. jump on them bareback and yeah. counter them down the verge. <laughs> and we would never, and that was a, that was a road. It was a lane. Yeah. We would never in a million years be allowed to do that nowadays. Um, and I think we did at that point have to put hats on, but I remember doing it many a time you know, years ago. I mean, we're talking 30 odd years ago without a hat on. So, um, actually longer than that. Um, yes, much longer than that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't mention ages on this. 35 years ago, should I say. Um, but, um, uh, 
Yes, I mean, that was such great fun. That was yeah. the excitement of the day, riding and leading in head collars and lead reins and cans down the verge, of, you know, and pulling. that really teaches you to sit on a horse and Absolutely, balance yourself? Absolutely, yeah. Because if you don't, you fall off. And then we used quickly. to walk all the way up from the, back up from the field with hairs and the inside of our breeches, <laughs> <laughs> our jumpers. Well, that's the, definitely the worst bit. It's like in the summer where you're like, it'd be really great if I went riding in shorts because it's so hot. And then yes. you go and you never, no, ever ouch, do it again. No. <laughs> it's horrible. No. Um, so you said you joined the Pony Club quite late. What was it that got you into teaching? Um, I grew up in a, uh, basically in a riding school, so um, I was sort of drilled into um, thinking about doing um, the coaching side of it rather than the competitive mm. side of it right from, from day one. And I think wherever you are very early on, that sort of influences mm. you um, where you go, whether you're in a show jumping yard early on yeah. or event yard. Um, but coming from uh, Lincolnshire, um, right on the, on the coast, uh, uh, nobody had really ever heard of eventing at that, that point from, mm. from our, our point of view. Um, so right from the word go, when I was 15, I looked at the uh, BHS exam um, recommendations and what yeah. we needed uh, to have for my O-levels at that point. I know I needed four O-levels, one being English literature, <laughs> and that's all that I was focused on. Yeah. So I could then go and do my BHS AI. Yeah. Um, I think I was one of the first to do the actual state, the new stages exams. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I went straight into teaching at that point and then um, at the age of 18, 19, I was running a, um, a little riding school myself. Yeah. Um, and it was that point I then started um, competing horses yeah. a lot more and moved on from there. And you had a really, really, you know, you had a really successful eventing career. What made, what got you started with eventing? Um, with eventing, um, I remember there was a, um, a friend of mine, as another successful coach, and we were sat on um, a bank at an old event called Lowersby, yeah. probably when we were about 18. And we sat watching the, yeah. the event yeah. and we both said, you know what, this looks really good fun. <laughs> and we, we went on from there yeah. and both of us, um, um, Sue produced a, um, a horse up to four star level. I produced a horse up to four star level and yeah. we just went off in different directions. Yeah. And yeah, it was really, really good fun. And like along a similar line, so many riders have not stopped eventing and just carried on. What made you decide to start coaching and give up eventing? Ah, well, this is this is the big thing. I was, um, I mean, you say a successful eventing career. I, I wasn't, I would say that I ride much better now yeah. than I did then because yeah. I know so much more now and, yeah. and I think everything's changed slightly. Uh, I've got a better position now yeah. and I ride better now. But I find um, I learn so much from teaching other people. Absolutely. Like, so much. So, um, the, the catalyst for stopping me riding was when I got the junior coach's job yeah. um, because I absolutely didn't want to uh, do two things yeah. not as well as I could do. Yeah. So I turned myself from um, a semi-professional rider at that point yeah. into a professional coach yeah. um, and, and that's where, where it all changed and yeah. that was probably about 11 years ago. Yeah. 10 years ago I think yes yeah, yeah. but coaching has always been your passion in that sense absolutely I get so much out of it I love it <laughs> yes if you could get everyone to spend the next two weeks working on and consolidating one skill what would it be um I think the one thing an event rider has to be really good at and that is to be able to ride straight, turn, and ride straight. Yeah. So they've got to be able to do a successful turn and come out of it in a straight line yeah. without the shoulders wobbling. Mm. So that's for, for your dressage, yeah. turning down the centre line across the diagonal. For show jumping, it's essential. Yeah. And for cross country, it becomes even more apparent. Mm. So that's an exercise that I use regularly at home. I'll yeah. use today at the conference. And yeah. it, it's just, if a rider can, majority of riders can't come out of a turn straight yeah. and that's where there's a big weakness of getting horses to fences yeah what would be your go-to exercise to help with that um i would like lace and poles on the ground as a square um yeah. so i will generally put um there's, there's two squares I'd use. I'd either use four corners, so the rider has to go round something in the corner, mm. and so they're looking from one corner to the next. Yeah. So that's great at developing um, how to ride into a corner. Mm. But probably one of the better exercises is having um, eight poles, so two to go through on each side of the yeah. square. Um, I'd normally use probably about a 16 or 17 meter span yeah. across from pole to pole. So it ends up being about a 15 meter square. Mm. 
And if you do that, the, th the, the strides it takes to make the turn yeah. are three strides. So you go straight, cant around a corner for yeah. three strides, and then you're straight again. Yeah. And I can't tell you how much the flat work, the jumping improves <laughs> from, from yeah. just that exercise. We, we, you did that exercise at your demo at Wellington, and our pretty much our entire pony club was there. And <laughs> definitely everyone who, all the kids who are on our yard is there, and our arena was just poles. For, it still is. <laughs> yes. Just poles everywhere, all the time. Oh, funny. Funny. Is, it's yes. lovely but also it's not great for practicing dress <laughs> no, no. Um, leading on from that what is your favorite exercise um, you go to every time when okay well i've got a favorite jumping exercise that um i'd often use um and that would be um a bounce of cavaletti's yeah. couple of strides to a, a, a fence, maybe yeah. an oxer, and then two strides to another bounce of cavalettis. Um, or don't, they don't need to be cavalettis, yeah. but something that stops the horse rushing away yeah. on the landing and something that makes the rider look to another direction. Yeah. So um, it might be in a straight line, mm -hmm. which is really good to stop the horses rushing and it yeah. draws the riders back. And it, or it might be on a curving line. So you use the middle fence as a turning yeah. fence, which again, is essential yeah. for an event rider to be able to <laughs> Alex do. Alex and I were at a camp a few weeks ago and they put a similar exercise up, which my horse is really quick in front, so she thinks that is the best exercise in the whole world yeah. <laughs> because she just doesn't have to slow down. She, yeah. she won't touch them and she'll go as fast as she likes. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's good. As long as she's got some good hoop brain coordination with that. Just like, what? so obviously you produced All Star B up to novice. Mm -hmm. What was it about Roz that meant you handed the ride to her? Um, well, initially I, rode, I handed the ride to Emily Parker, um, who was a, um, a girl I worked with yeah. for quite a long time, but then she moved up into Scot to Scotland and I wanted right. to keep an eye on <laughs> uh, the horse. And at the same time, um, I just started uh, working with Roz quite, quite mm. a lot. Um, and I recognized Roz is just attention to yeah. detail is phenomenal yeah. and we worked really well together. So I knew I could be a bit, you know, have a yeah. part in, um, yeah. The way the horse she must have the most unbelievable core strength ever <laughs> yes even pregnant yeah. she's got uh, a, yeah. an amazing core and, like, strength watching her round a weg i mean like having like i've never watched anyone ride with long or jump with long reins like she does and so mm. i started off a bit like oh why is she riding like that but it just she's so really makes sense all massively makes sense yeah. yeah and even if she gets in close or he takes a long one she's just mm. It, like, it all happens underneath her and she's just perfectly exactly. balanced. She's in the middle yeah. of the horse, which, um, you know, is, is what yeah. we're always so majorly aiming for. Watch. Yeah, So impressive, yeah. especially on a massive horse like all star He's he big. You want to see him at the moment. <laughs> he looks like a bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> he's, we've not got him light ready for the galloping, you know, so he's solid. just like solid, yes. <laughs> I at the home coach's day. <laughs> and I was like, like a dressage horse. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, working hunter more like. <laughs> um, so leading on from the choosing rods, She's obviously had a really successful season this year mm -hmm. and everyone goes on about talented horses and talented riders. But do you think that talent is real and how much of an impact do you think it has on an individual's um, mm. progression in the sport? It's a very interesting question. I think um, you, you see riders and you, you notice natural flair yeah. and ability and you see riders that you notice that are going to have to put a little bit more effort into mm. what they do. Um, my big belief is work work ethic. Yeah. So, I I mean, there's a saying that is I think goes something like um, hard work will always beat talent yeah. if talent refuses to work, and that yeah. that's out and out. Um, so I see a, a lot of the the sort of 15, 16, 17, yeah. 18 year old riders, um, and ones that just want to work, 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 yeah. and they doesn't matter what they're sat on, they train their horses yeah. to be really good, yeah. and then you get some very skillful naturally abilitated yeah. riders that actually aren't into taking anything on yeah. i think talents are again it's something that's um put into a rider's yeah. mind very early on i again see quite a lot of pony riders that have come through mm. the system that may have done very well yeah. at ponies and meddled um and or been on squads so when they come into the the junior program they already think that um that it's going to happen <laughs> yeah, it's and um the, the difficulty is is getting their mindset to be challenging yeah. again because sometimes they are frightened to um to challenge themselves it, yeah. yes because it, in case it goes wrong yeah so it, it's all about getting them to mm. to recognize it's such a mental sport isn't it oh like, very much so yeah. yes yes yeah yeah um what's one thing you wish you'd learned sooner 
Um, from my own riding point of view, um, I wish I'd worked a lot harder on my own balance and yeah. position um, because that, that would be the thing if at that point would have let me down. Yeah. Um, but um, um, I think um, the long range thing uh, has been a revelation to me um, without yeah. a shadow of a doubt because um, um, I've recognised such a massive difference yeah. in way the way the horses go yeah. and the riders go from it. It's very Michael it's, Young. Michael. Yes, it's <laughs> it's difficult to persuade a rider to do it, mm -hmm. especially one that's um, come up through the system of uh, shorten your reins, shorten yeah. your reins, put a stronger bit in, yeah. control, control, control. So um, I would often tie knots in reins yeah. and and make riders sit their hands behind yeah. the knots and then because they can't shorten the reins, they yeah. change the body position just yeah. like that. Just because you have just, to. Just straight away, the yeah. next fence changes. Yeah. And um, my, often my question is, um, did you like that? And they'll say no. <laughs> no. You know, they <laughs> no. don't like it. They don't like the feeling of yeah. almost nakedness, of, yeah. of not being... Having ha no support system. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, um, however, the, the clever ones will recognise um, the, the impact it has mm. on the horses. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden the body position changes mm. and um, it is completely the holy grail as far yeah. as I'm concerned. And I learned that from Chris Bartle yeah. um, and I wouldn't have really thought about it. Mm. Um, and then I've used it myself riding yeah. and I, yeah. Amazing. Very interesting, yeah. Uh, what is your favorite level to coach? Um, I think the favorite level is, it's not so much a, a level it's a um, an age group of riders that are thirsty for knowledge yeah. so I love imparting knowledge across and yeah. um, that's great um, coaching riders at top level is very challenging for yeah. me especially if they've come to me for the very first time yeah. and they're they're riding at three and four star level yeah. or four and five star level they have their own style and it's obviously successful so yes you want to change it but there's that's things that you want to change and absolutely that that's exactly exactly mm. it um if they they all will often come if they've got a problem that's yeah. the thing um and the amount of people that will ring me up and say i need to come and play with your skinnies because my horse is running out um, <laughs> and often they won't jump a skinny that lesson yeah. because I've got to strip it all back yeah. to straightness again and yeah. then the following session will be you know yeah. more skinnies. than just a pole on the ground yeah. um, but um, teaching teaching children and the enjoyment yeah. that you get out of that is, is great I love yeah. that so we're going back to your exercises and skills what's one skill you think that team GB should work on in preparation for Tokyo? That's, that's a very, <laughs> yes. I, I uh, was very naughty and read these questions on the way this morning. <laughs> this so. is one of the questions we were like, can we ask this? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. I thought about it, but um, um, I think we've got um, um, more than any, anything at this point, we've mm. got a wealth of yeah, fantastic so jockeys. Many. And, and um, there I see improvements in some of the top riders over mm. the last um, sort of three or four years yeah. dramatically. So. Um, I would say we've we've got some some really yeah. good jockeys. Um, I was very lucky, obviously, to be out at, at Tryon yeah. um, at Weg, and I saw um, how it all worked, and they're mentally strong, yeah. and they all came together, and they all rode really really well. Mm. However, there is um, in my mind a, a non mistake mm. culture or a no mistake yeah. mistake culture got yeah. to be developed in our training yeah. methods now when it if you watch um athletics and, yeah. and athletes that um athletics rather they they will often do their their pbs and um they will make no mistakes yeah. at that top level um now it's obviously difficult for us because we have a horse yeah. involved as well um but i think uh, ros ros won because she didn't actually yeah. make a mistake um yeah. whereas ingrid made a mistake at the last yeah. fence and tom uh, john just yeah. got a little bit close to a yeah. vertical it was heartbreaking and for the, ingrid at the same time oh, yes, <laughs> amazing yeah. um, but um i think um it's about the no mistake culture yeah. for me so um it would be training and training yeah. to be able to do um do it as well in training, you know, to be yeah. no mistake in training yeah. um, it, with a competitive feel. Yeah. There's a real shift at the moment, I think. I mean, for so long, 
cross country and eventing has been the sort of sport where you just get it, you just get between the flags. Like it doesn't Absolutely. matter how it looks, you just get no. between the flags. No. And we we need to keep that. But also, there's a shift to actually it can look nice yes. at every fence, and you want it to look yeah. nice at every fence. And you Absolutely. want like you need to work on it being perfect. Yes, okay. don't get me wrong. A cross country round is um, uh, is a good round yeah. if you, it's a little bit off the seat of your pants. Yeah. However, um, I, I think it's about making sure that um, you don't say. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just got away with that. Yeah. Forget about There's it no and move on. Go. Yes, yeah. yeah. So um, I think it's a, across the dis the whole of the dis disciplines. There shouldn't be a uh, a left hind left out yeah. in the halt, or yeah. there shouldn't be a, a whisker of a movement yeah. in the salute, and yeah. and that sort of thing. And that that's where we can all just get better and better yeah. and better there's there's so many areas that we yeah. can improve on yeah um and that's why the germans have been so good because they're so rigorous about all the training they were so good, were so good i'm yes. going to say were so okay. good i don't think they were so good this last year <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> so but yes very yeah. much so even yeah. listening to i mean technically our rival podcast now and um, but equi ratings their lead up to try on obviously everyone was like the germans are going to do so well look at all their individual results but all of their championship results haven't been good for several years yes, now yeah. and it, I like maybe it's the extra pressure whatever it is but there was definitely some pressure on those riders and you yeah. could see it in the show really? jumping without a shadow of a doubt you could see it yeah. through the show jumping with Ingrid and Julia yeah. and yeah I think so wow. yeah I don't think they were as good under pressure yeah. as we were wow no that's so interesting thank you so so much that's for all right it's a pleasure again <laughs> no problem at all <laughs> it really does it's very exciting good um we'll leave it there Okay, that's it. That was the most exciting interview that we've had so far, which isn't saying a lot because we've had one, but it, trust me, it was very exciting for Alex and I. If you want, if there's anything you want us to ask next time, if there's any comments you want to make, then email us at theponypod at gmail.com, DM us on Instagram at theponypodcast, or message us on Facebook. It's just the Pony Podcast. Anything at all is just let us know and thanks so much for listening i hope you tune in next time when we're gonna have we've got a little short going up today as well on um equine influenza which is obviously a really big thing so if you want to learn a little bit more about that a little bit more about the facts to do with it then tune into the next episode thanks bye